<sighs> oh, clipboard. If it wasn't for you, I'd be having to make this checklist in my head. I mean, I'm perfectly capable, but then some of the checks would disappear, and then where would we be? <laughs> Probably having to start all over in this hole of doors we found. <sighs> I always thought this was going to be a place of books, not doors. It's less of a hallway and more of a doorway, isn't it? <laughs> uh, now then, let's see. Door 54, red. Double door, about 14 feet clearance. Uh, let's take a peek in and... Oh! Look at they're starting up a business. Well, I wish them the best. Door 54, Ghost Busters. Hmm, should probably ask for their number. Uh, okay, uh, door 55, a green door with a purple trim and a circle near the top. About nine foot clearance. Okay. Oh, the Emerald City! Always wanted to vacation there. I um, wasn't aware the place was real. Um, okay, I'd better close it up before the guard shows up. Let's see, Emerald City. Okay, door 55, varnished cherry, seven foot clearance, ornate polished ebony handle. A little ominous feeling, but uh, that'll go away. Okay. Skunk. Oh, oh goodness. Um, uh, hello, Mr. Vane. Sir. Vincent Vame. Oh, uh, of course, uh, sir. Sir Vincent Vame. A big, noited bat man. Um, okay, uh, you're glaring. Um, uh, haven't, haven't seen you since the Rusinago. Uh, what brings you to my neck of the woods? You explained the nature of your store last we met. You go where you are needed. Tonight, I need you. Why are you dressed like an auction barker? You, oh, oh, the clothes. Oh, oh it's Halloween. Uh, could you guess what I am? Go on, guess. Give it a guess. Guess, please. Guess, guess, guess. No. Oh, well, I'm Crowley from Good Omens, remember? I, I even got the evil-looking contacts behind the big glasses. Um, But uh, y y wait, wait, y wait. You said you need me. Like, me? Me? I did not stutter. Are you interested? Well, I suppose I am, yes. But, but do you really need, like, you know, a big chatty skunk? I mean, not many people need, well, me, you know? It's just, you know, they, well, usually cross the street when they see me, or, or do book orders through the mail, or I might get some trick-or-treaters, maybe. Uh, I'll have a bowl out and everything. Just one night. That's all I request. Well, um, okay. Door 56, was it? Oh, uh, yes, yes. You're uh, familiar with this particular portal door? I am. It's mine. Oh, oh goodness, um, that's... there must be a draft. Hmm, your library is one of ley lines and curiosities, and you are its warden and caretaker. I'm told they speak highly of your candor and ingenuity. Uh, who? Your books. Oh, they do? Really? Sometimes I've got the feeling they're watching, but I've never gotten an actual word out of them. Mm. They don't speak with tongue and vibration. Not as we do. Art has a way of resonating with those in touch with such expressions of creativity. Okay, tap on the nose, I'll get you. So, where are we? Sort of a big gothic manor? Oh, oh I love the grandfather clock. Um, very Bram Stoker meets Oscar Wilde. This is my family's manor. Perched at the apex of a cliff in the twilight of the darkest hour. Um, is, is that the time? Oh, I couldn't tell. The clock seems to be flapping its hands, I think. Could you please take a peek out the window? Oh, of course. Um, let's just take a peeky through these blinders. <laughs> Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I'm a bit nervous and I tend to make puns uh, when I'm anxious. Um, I apologise a lot to you. Uh, anyway, let, let's see now. <gasps> um, there uh, appears to be a glowy void where your ocean's supposed to be. I know. It happens every Hallow's Eve. Vain manner bends beyond the reality and disappears for a time. To what end, I do not know. The only way I was ever able to even find the place was through your door. Oh, well, 
How'd you gather I have doorway to your house? Out of those I've met, magic tends to gravitate naturally towards you. I'd like your assistance. Uh, well, a uh, book club reporting for duty, Mr. Sir Vane. Uh, what do I need to do? For the moment, enjoy some tea. Listen to my stories. Vane Manor insists on particulars for guests. Namely, its currency is hospitality. Follow. Oh, I heard about this. Some places seek emotional through lines to appease their function. Like how libraries want people to read inside them. Or how casinos seek thrills, yes. Spend enough time performing one activity in the building and the feelings left behind leave an imprint. Oh, I love your study, survey. Thank you. Art comes in all forms. But many of the sections of this house are contributions the veins have built upon over the years. Mind the tea kettle. It gets presumptuous when guests arrive. Oh, thank you. Mm. Nothing better than snuggling up surrounded by words. Makes me want to wrap my tail around myself and just snuggle in. Ah, just let all the worries drift away, curl up with a good book, you know? I can appreciate the sentiment. Creature comforts are our specialty. The warm fire, atmospherical touches, all meant to placate the senses completely. It's why I chose the study for you, instead of the lounge. Are these your books, then? They are not. They belong to Salazar Vane, my great-grandfather. It was quite a hobby of his to sample the most brilliant visionaries and pluck their curiosities from their minds, immortalizing them here in books you won't find anywhere in the world, not even your bookshop. Stop that. Oh, sorry, habit. Um, tell me a story, please. I want to hear one. Please, please, please. Do I have to do this, gunky eyes? They're very big. <sighs> no. Uh, what was that? <sighs> the manor has taken offense to my ungallant hospitality. Very well. Oh, goody, goody. <clears throat> Just put out my reading glasses. <clears throat> I had assumed Baron Adamar's spellbinding tale be the inflections of madness creeping at the edge of sleepless nights. He recounted the acquisition of a painting depicting his late father, the Count of Artois. The work was neither commissioned nor donated by any colleague or friend of his, yet there it hung in a gallery in a country they had never visited. His letter bemoaned that as he stared into the baleful oil smattering of his late father's gaze, Baron Adamar was struck by some compulsory twist of curiosity. That the painting surely belonged to him and his family, a sepultry yet inconvenient sum was dispensed, and the wretched thing was on his wall by the fall. His letters frequented my home with alarming intensity. His previous complaints of the court and irrelevant gossip gradually diluted into the ramblings of shifting eyes and the mutable twisting of the painting's expression, as if displeased or worse, outraged by his supposed offspring's unspoken inadequacies. He also spoke of the painting's affixation displaced in places he did not recall ever moving it to, from the antechamber to the foyer. By the first snowfall, it had migrated to his bedroom, and no matter how many times he attempted to dispose of it, it was restored, defiantly, in another portion of the estate. I was implored to witness this painting for myself. Despite my withering patience, the desire to placate his saccharine humors was borderline entropic. But the more I ignored, the more his sophomoric wailing turned to desperate pleas. 
I feared you would set his estate ablaze. I could not resist the desire to roll my eyes, but I appeased his request by the end of the year. When I approached his manor in the eve, the knocks on the solid oak were drowned by the blood-curdling shriek of horror and baleful agony. I thrust myself towards the door, prepared for an assailant or robber, and hurried myself up to the ornate stairs where the echoes of his walls decried. I stumbled back upon witnessing the Baron's mortified expression as his fingers bled to dilute oils and pastel, reaching out in clawing torment as painted teeth jut from his gaping mouth, like a separate jaw was forcing itself over his own. I lingered with my eyes riveted in paralysis as the painting assailed the Baron. It would be inadequate to describe the picture devoured him, so much as it commingled its colorful oils and his flesh to coalesce in a new work of art. His body flattened to a portrait in a mocking testament of his soul. Oh, goodness. What a chilling tale. Uh, what was that? An excerpt of a short story entitled The Painting of Artois by Edgar Allan Poe. But, um, he never wrote that, did he? Or so he thinks. Salazar would ensnare the minds of others, inspire them to write a sampling of their work so he could savor the taste for years to come. We aren't traditional vampire bats, you know. Like all veins, each of us crave and feed our various aspects of the human spirit. But our taste for which depends on who you meet. Salazar spent much of his life feeding on the inspiration of others, collecting works of singular, brilliant minds that would never be released, or even be remembered having penned. As for me, I enjoy creativity. Your tea is getting cold. Please, drink. Uh, oh, of course. Um, oh, that's, that's a bit tangy, actually. Um, hibiscus. Hmm. Um, so, um, sir, so, Sir Vane, uh, how can I help you with your problem? Every Halloween, Vane Manor disappears. Sometimes for the evening, sometimes for days. But each time it returns, the atmosphere is demonstrably oppressive. I would like your help to stop it. Well, I'm flattered you trust me so much with this, but I I don't uh, exactly know why you think I could do anything about it. You're curious, you're resourceful, and you live in one of the most frustrating pieces of architecture since that one apartment building in Singapore. You mean the one that looks like they stacked a bunch of uh, buildings on top of each other? The interlace, yes. Um, well, consider me recruited, Sir Vane. Uh, so, uh, what's causing the disappearance? I don't know. Is it a ghost or some sort of magical anomaly? I don't know. And when did this start happening to your man? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, okay, you don't know. Yeah, I figured. It's been happening longer than I or my sister have been around. As I live here, the energy of this house builds upon its desire for hospitality, to placate visitors long enough for us to feed. But after every Halloween, when the manor disappears and returns, it has a distinctly foreign energy to it. What kind of energy? Ambition. A hunger for power and control and carnal, forbidden things, like that of the Naga Lords and the grand palaces built upon the bones of their conquests. Oh, look, the terracotta army. Or the coffee bean across the street from my shop. I suppose. Something is realigning the energies of this manor every year, and I want to put a stop to it. Hmm. Well, before we begin, I'd like to politely request that you take a minute to sample your own hospitality. Excuse me? 
You're a big old tangle of knots right now, Sir Vane. Your hands are a quiver and your eyes are bloodshot. <laughs> My eyes are always red. The point is, you need to relax um, so we can let the house try to help us. First, take a seat. All right, I suppose I could use a de-stressor. <clears throat> Do as you will. Let me just wrap my tail around you. Take a little sip of your tea. You make a really good cup. Now, I'm going to try to just take my sentans and move them delicately to your shoulders. Hmm, you just kind of float away for a bit. You smell that? Hmm. Plaster molds. Watercolour paints. A hint of wine. And just the slight copper sweetness of blood. Uh, oh, um, blood? Uh, really? Um, oh yeah. Uh, uh, never mind, never mind. Um, ju just breathe. Let go for a minute. We are going to get our answers. And we're going to do it together. As friends. Mm -hmm. Let's not get carried away, shall we? Oh, um, feeling better? Mm, much better, thank you. <sighs> Now, where should we begin? I was dealing with a bit of a kerfuffle the other year in regards to the bookshop, uh, determining whether or not it was haunted. Oftentimes there's a spectre of uh, will, a verisimilitude of intent that lingers from people of particular influence. Um, could you tell me the, uh, the origins of the veins? But, Sir Vain? I'm, I'm sorry, I was distracted a moment. Yes, I can tell you. Follow me. You really do have a lovely home. It hardly feels like mine. Steeped in so much legacy, one can feel like a pebble in a quarry. With so much marble, you're expected to fashion temples and statues that stand the test of time. Do you not feel like you want to be as big as some of your family? No. The times of dynasties have long since grown archaic. They're best left respected, but retired. My sister and I, we prefer decadence and power in moderation. I prefer to surround myself in art. She prefers to surround herself in herself. But our parents, our grandparents, their hunger was far more voracious than ours. Here we are. It's a tapestry. It feels like it goes on forever. This quilt tells the story of our lives, immortalized in a singular work of art. It coils and wraps around the walls, up towards the ceiling and down again. Every three generations, the veins select children to travel out into the world and spread our lineage. A practice my sister and I have little motivation to uphold. Really? Why? Celine and I do not revere the old ambitions as our predecessors do. Could I see the portraits of your ancestors? Of course. This way. So, like, your family goes back thousands of years. Uh, if you were around during, say, Mesopotamia and all that, uh, that means you were around before vampires, right? Probably. I am not great with our history, so I'd be the wrong one to ask. So wouldn't it be, I don't know, weird if you call yourself a vampire fat, but your family's older than that? Sometimes origin precedes reputation. We liked the myth behind the story and kept with it. You'll find Vame origins inspired one or two small curiosities over the years. Like there, the bat in the black tunic. That's Vertai. He was so focused on absolute precision. He once tried to feed on the diligence of a farmer and, while drunk on the energies, ended up counting all the rice he spilt on the floor during the struggle. <laughs> Quite embarrassing. Ah, there. See that one? The bat with the slicked black hair and the blood on his lapel? That's Kirill. He got a taste for passion. His hickeys were quite recognizable. He... Oh wait, so... So that means vampires aren't 
real. You and I both know the influences of imagination and inspiration have a tendency to leave an impression on the reality. I believe your author friend Pratchett said that, eh? Crowley. Oh, um, oh yes, um, I suppose he did. Uh, these are... There must be hundreds of names on these walls. Could I... Could I see the first one? Yes, we're coming to it. Kion Vame, short for Kionios. One of the first recorded... Uh, Sir Vane, is there something wrong? Is it the, the picture frame? This is supposed to hold the painting of Kionios Vame. It's been stolen. N no, no, I don't think it's been stolen. Um, look, the background paint's still there. Uh, and so's the plaque. The painting is still there. Then where is Kion? That's, um, ominous. Yes, I know. I fear the longer we wait on this answer, the more danger we might be in here. Then let's try to figure out if the man has been giving us any clues. Uh, maybe try to figure these things out. Um, hmm. Question. You said you didn't know much about your family history, right? That's right. So, how come you knew all that stuff before? I... I can't seem to recall. It all sort of came to me. Curious. Uh, well, uh, magical places tend to get a little non-Euclidean when it benefits them. And uh, I think the house is trying to give us some clues. Hmm. Hmm. You have something on your mind? Well, we're just thinking about the post story. About the painting? Uh, you just picked it at random, and then we have a painting that's outright missing. What was it the poet written? As if displeased or worse, outraged by his supposed offspring's unspoken inadequacies. A little on the nose, don't you think? Perhaps the manor is feeling the energies of your ancestry and trying to push back here? You said it yourself, they manor was always meant for hospitality. But that's your manor. Your hospitality. There's probably dozens of vain manors around the world. Hmm. Do you have, like, uh, a cartography room? Uh, a map of the region or anything like that? No. But we do have a conservatory for stargazing. Shouldn't be too far of a walk. Allons-y! Wrong tenant. Uh, right, sort of. You aren't as frightened of these halls as others. Well, I've got a bit of a fizzy tale in all this, I do admit. Um, but spending so much time in the bookshop, you start to find the macabre is more... sad than scary. How do you mean? Well, often, the things we're scared of are like, uh, spiders and ghosts and dark, creepy crawlies that go bump in the night. But really, it's just because we don't know them. Spiders eat flies. Uh, ghosts can be fun to chat with once in a while, uh, if you get to know them. And the dark has the same kind of mysterious qualities as the present, but, you know, what's in there? What could it be? Uh, but instead of a new tea cozy, we think it's a big set of gnashing teeth. But I find it's often just because they're misunderstood or or strange, or even just lonely. Uh, lonely? Sometimes it just needs a cool head to take a peek see in, and let them, you know, feel the warmth of companionship. <laughs> a regular light keeper on the shoals, as it were. I, I guess. Well, I guess so. Though light keepers have a tendency to descend into madness if left alone too long. Not all darkness is misunderstood. And not all monsters are lonely. Um, Sevain, was that door always there? No, it was not. Hang on, do you hear that? Um, sounds like a party. Um, oh, I don't get invited to parties. Uh, could be a bit of fun, I think. <gasps> Ghost party? I think these are your ancestors, Sylvain. Sylvain? Oh dear. Um, excuse me, sir. Uh, have you seen a young blue bat, uh, red toy, smart suit, um, no, that describes a lot of you in here. 
<laughs> Look at this, darling. Someone thinks they can crash our party. Wait, crash? Uh, no, no, no. I know. Uh, or, or he's just trying to... And of course he's not crashing the party. He's here to help. Oh, yeah. Uh, wait, how do you know I'm here to help? Ah, uh, I thought he was here to help. Look at those eyes. Or rather, you look into ours. Oh, uh, well, wait. Ah, yes. I see it now. That the tire, that large tail, the platter in his hand. When did I get this platter? Pay it no mind, my dear. After all, you're here to help. I'm here to help. Here to help. If you're not a vain, and you're not a party crasher, you're here to serve our drinks. Put your mind at ease. We'll take that and store it away for now. Go ahead. Curl up your tail. <laughs> Says a good Of course. Uh, feels a bit flo floaty now. We're doing, doing something, something important. Handing out the drinks, tending to the party. Our servants are the most polite and attentive in the world. Polite and attentive. That, that sounds right. Uh, how can I be of assistance? Sir. Welcome to Vane Manor. Might I interest you in an order? Please, take your time. We are at your beck and call. Ah, you're a gent, sir. We pride ourselves on service. It's all that matters. It is such a delight to be a service to Vane Manor forever and ever. Such a delight to be of service forever and ever. Feeling every thought slip away to let the red glow fill everything. Fill, fill everything. Fill, fill, fill everything. Oh, sounds like there's a storm outside. I do hope that won't disrupt the party. Would anyone care for a glass? Uh, uh... Oh, oh dear. Oh, I'm getting shining, aren't I? I, I just, I need to. I, I, I just, uh, I need to. I just remembered. Um, there's some canapes. Yes. Um, please. I'll be right back. Give me a moment. Are you all right? Your eyes aren't quite red enough. Uh, no, no problem. I'll, I'll have some some drops uh, in the back. The back. And uh, thank you. Oh, oh dear. Okay. Spooky checklist. Um, fluff. Tail. Sint hands. So. Okay, got to assume that that's there. Uh, that's all the important bits. Um. So, Vane. Vincent. Do you know how tempting you are? How hungry you make me feel. A timid spirit so polite and eager to please. You'll be a coveted piece of my collection. Where are you? Uh, Sir Vane, uh, are you okay? I feel an urge, little skunk. The ache to enrapture you in my gaze. Conform every little fleck of yourself to my liking. You could be in my library. A poised statue that reads whatever book rests in your hands. Your voice full of a part of the ink that lines the papers. Existing to convey my stories. Um, oh, I think I'd be much better at keeping books than, you know, books keeping me. Um, Surveyn, oh, I think I get it now. This place is waking up your old instincts the longer you stay here. Is that what this is? <laughs> Feelings 
familiar and intoxicating. Like tasting an ancient addiction I long thought that no longer had hold of me. It, it wouldn't take much to take you, to let you stare into my eyes and disappear in art. Uh, Sir, Sir Ryan, this isn't you! Uh, come on, uh, let's go back to the study. Uh, ha- have some tea? You enjoy tea, right? I... hunger for a different kind of flavor. I want to drink up... your sense of self. Uh Uh-uh. Don't pull away. Come close. It is the gaze of a friend, yeah? Uh, Oh, uh, I am... You, uh... That's it. Mm, There's that expression I long to see. I... ache for it. It's almost as if something has come over me, little skull. Uh, Is it? Uh, Or are you uh, really someone else right now? Yes, and no. Uh, oh, oh dear. So this is the little piece of incense menagerie scattering about my hallowed walls. What an aged soul. What a cultivated mind. What a pestering nonsense. Oh, well, uh, thank you for the compliments, um, Mr. Uh... The original owner of the surname Vame. The one whose home lies at the deepest heart of my will. K- Kyanos? The same. Don't worry, Vincent is fine. Intoxicated by his hunger. My. Hunger. This place, where Vain Manor goes. It's where all the other manors go, isn't it? Back to the first. Oh, <laughs> I see why he covets you. Ingenuity, intelligence. All admirable traits to suck away and leave behind a temple of love and obedience. Thank you. Weirdly not feeling great about the compliment. Um. Boy, do you take his home away? Every year the veins lay just a little further from my original vision of what our family should be. Must be. So when the veil is thinnest, the manor returns here to the Aegis. Where my spirit revitalizes the original hunger of a manor. As well as the residents. This hunger is part of them. And no amount of meddling will bring it to a stop. Not even you, little skunk. What, what, what are you going to do to me? I think I will sample Vincent's taste for art. Mold you into a little book stand. Balanced by your tail. Fetching your tones with your scent hands. I'm sure Vincent will appreciate the gesture. You just have to stare. Deep. Uh, Stare deep. Stare deep. Very good. Allow the sensation of your body to grow warm and far away. My crimson streams seep into your mind and body. As long as you bathe in my red gaze, you are as much an extension of my will as any to change. Grow still. Grow. You are mine. 
Oh hey. Did I ever tell you I have a collection too? I heard of the Telltale's little book. I keep a few on me. Okay, I'll take a deep breath. Just feel the warmth of my tail around you. And remember the hospitality you gave me. Uh, the scent of tea and the sounds of a crackling fireplace. You're not alone. Not even here. Breathe. I'm all right. Sir Vane, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to invade your personal space without consent. Uh, but, but you were possessed by a ghost and I panicked and it's I... It's fine. Relax. I am back. What did you hit me with? Ah, uh, a copy of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I'll keep a book or two hiding in a little magic pocket in my tail from time to time. Uh, you know, just, just in case. Just in case you want to read? Eh, uh, something like that. Are we coming back? I, I think we are. Uh, good morning. Did we, uh... Did we do it? Mm, not even close. The house... feels that hunger again. As do I. Oh! Oh, I'm sorry, Sir Vane. It's alright. You did as I asked. Neither of us could have predicted where we would end up. Are you injured? Uh, no, sir. Just a little rattled. Good. For now, I think you have some doors to finish checking. Uh, oh, uh, of course. Uh, I, I should finish that, yes. Skunk? Um, Oreo? Um, yes, survey. Come to my home again. For tea. I'll let you read my collection. I would like that. Sorry we didn't fix your house, Sir Vane. <laughs> there is always next year. 